proper inference setup for local models is hard. Even the biggest API providers gets it wrong and they don't offer all the features. OpenAI GPT OSS is a very good example of this. There are a number of different providers on open router hosting the same model at different price points and different latency. But the question is, do you get the same performance from these providers? The answer is unfortunately not. Based on the provider, not only you get very different price and speed, but also intelligence. And the worst two are probably the most widely used. Now, unfortunately, the same is true for a local hosted solution. More on that later in the video. The artificial analysis team did benchmarking of different API providers on three different benchmarks. These include GPQA, AMI2025, and IF Bench. They ran the benchmarks multiple times. And the results shows a huge variance depending on the API provider. Now, even though we are talking about GPT OSS, but the same is going to be true for any other open weight model that is hosted on remote API providers. In fact, back in the day, I created a video highlighting the exact same problem with Llama 4. Okay, so let's first look at which provider is best for GPT OSS and then why these variations in performance happen. In terms of price point, most of them are very similar. Grok and Cerebris are probably the most expensive ones, but they also provide you the highest throughput that is available in the market. Although Cerebris has the most variance in the speed that you're going to get, but the speed is almost 3000 tokens per second, which is incredible and nothing come closer to it. But the question is going to be, what about intelligence? So we're going to look at these results one by one. The first one is GPQA. At the best performance is provided on Navita and Paracel. The worst is Azure and Amazon. And the difference is almost 8%, which is pretty incredible. Now, another thing is if you look at Cerebrus and Croc, they also does pretty bad compared to the top API providers. And I suspect most of the enterprises are going to be using Amazon Bedrock or Microsoft Azure Factory because of vendor lock-ins. But it actually gets worse on Amy 2025. Now with the top model, you are seeing almost 10% reduction in performance on Amy 2025, Amazon Bedrock, and almost 13% for Azure. For IF Bench, you see a very similar picture. Azure again is the least performant, whereas Deep Infra, Fireworks, Novita, they are probably the best performing models or the best API providers for GPT OSS for this specific benchmark. Here's a very good representation based on the same results. This was put together by Peter Gostov. I highly recommend to actually follow him. He has very interesting takes on generative AI related stuff on X. So again, if you look at these three benchmarks, Azure and Amazon Bedrock are the worst API providers for GPT OSS. Okay, so why do we see this huge variation in performance difference? There are a number of different reasons. I'm going to try to list down some of them. This is going to be important to any open weight model that you want to run. The first one, and this used to be a biggest contribution was quantization. So for the bigger models, model providers, will either release the model in 16-bit or 8-bit and then the community will quantize it further based on the hardware that is available. Now quantization has a huge impact especially on the mixture of experts. I usually recommend to run these models in 8-bit, 4-bit the least. You don't want to go below that. In this case OpenAI has released the model in floating point precision of 4-bit and I hope everybody is using that. The second biggest contributor to the performance variation that you see is usually prompt template. This used to be a huge issue with open weight models back in the day because there were no standard prompt format. Now, fortunately, this was resolved, but unfortunately, OpenAI just introduced this new harmony response format. 
So if the API providers are not properly setting up the response format, that could result in performance degradation. As pointed out here in this official OpenAI blog post, that GPT OSS should not be used without using the Harmony format as it will not work correctly. The third one is usually inference settings. So this will include something like temperature, how they are sampling tokens, and so on and so forth. But now with these reasoning models, we have yet another parameter that the inference providers have to consider. And that is a reasoning effort. So if you don't set the reasoning effort properly, you're going to see huge variation in the performance. And this does seem to be the case specifically with Microsoft Azure. So here's a post from Lucas Bear. You probably remember he's, pro he's one of those people that were hired by Meta from OpenAI. So he says, let me repeat what on this picture here because it's quite brutal. And then he references the performance numbers. Here is a response from Lucas Pickup who seems to be part of the Microsoft Azure AI team. So he says, old VLM commits that didn't respect reasoning effort. So all requests defaulted to medium. Now this has been fixed as of yesterday afternoon across all instances. He's specifically talking about 120B GPT OSS model. This is clearly shouldn't have been live from Wednesday last week when the VLLM commits to handle reasoning effort hits OSS main till yesterday. So it seems like they should have the correct configurations working now. Okay, so if you want to use these bigger models through API providers, I highly recommend to compare multiple different providers because you might see these differences. Now, unfortunately, you see very different performance even for the locally hosted solutions. For example, if you are using LM Studio versus Olama, you might see some differences. So here is somebody who says, why Olama GPT OSS 20 billion version is too slow compared to the LM Studio version. Any issues? So this is the creator of Llama CPP. Most of the locally hosted solution uses Llama CPP as a backend. So here he pointed out that LM Studio are using the upstream GGML implementation, which is significantly better and well optimized. GGML is the own implementation from Llama CPP. It's a quantization technique. And then he says, looking at Olama's modification in GGML, they have too much branching and their MXFP4, this is the floating point precision that the OpenAI models use. And the attention sync implementation is really inefficient. And then he says that you would expect inefficiencies. Now, there was a response from Olama. The Olama team is moving away from Llama CPP. They are using their own implementation. Now, it turns out there was some very interesting things in the plots that they shared. For example, if you are processing longer context, you should see lower speeds, but here they show more tokens per second. This was pointed out, but there was actually an explanation for this. Here is the person who actually did the testing. So he said, found generated tokens are culprit here. 16K only generated 193 tokens versus 600 tokens for 8K in responses. So seems like Olama implementation, at least back when they were discussing this was slower compared to LM Studio. Okay, so what was actually the reason of this video? So I wanted to highlight that inference of open weight models is extremely hard. If you're self hosting these models, there are a lot of moving parts that you need to pay attention to. So the model may be actually good, but the way you're hosting it, the parameters that you're using are probably not optimized. And you're going to see some very drastic performance differences. So here is, is the CEO of Hugging Face. So he said, a uh, lots of conflicting takes about GPT OSS. We're powering the official OpenAI demo with Hugging Face inference providers, thanks to Fireworks, Cerebrus Systems, Croc, Together AI, although a couple of these had really bad scores on the benchmarks that we saw. Now he says, something to remember, inference for new Frontier Open model isn't easy, especially with a new format like Harmony and the volume of interest that GPT OSS is getting out of the gate. I totally agree with this, and especially if you're thinking of hosting these models 
in your own local environments, you need to consider these issues. Because in some cases, the models may not be bad, but it's all about how you're running inference. So here is a very interesting benchmark that was shared today. Uh, I think this is coming from Peter Gostov, which I previously highlighted. So the GBT OSS 120 billion model seems to be on par or very close to GBT5 on math. It's better than CROC4. So this is a very interesting observation. And again, points out to these models may be a lot more capable of than what we expect them to be. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.